Hey what's going on guys, just before we dive into the video I want to let you know that we have an awesome Iceborne giveaway running right now with the guys over at Gamersheek for everything you see on screen. A PS4 Pro, a year of PlayStation Plus, the steelbook copy of Iceborne and even the two Monster Hunter Nendroid figures. If you want to enter, click the link in the description box down below. And if you want to save some money on your Monster Hunter pre-order, you can grab it at Gamersheek, use code ARIXGAMING and it will give you a discount making it the cheapest place to buy it that we've seen in the UK. Hey what's going on guys, Arix here, welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne and today I want to talk about another endgame related topic, so as always this is your spoiler warning, I'm going to talk about some monsters that you will encounter and unlock once you complete the campaign, so if you do not want to know about this, if you don't want to see these, if you want to go in blind, now is your spoiler warning, this is your opportunity to step away, if you're still here in the next 5 seconds, then that's on you. Cool? Alright. Also, before we get started, I want to give a massive shout out to TDS Femu. I hope I pronounced that correctly. You can find a link to their Twitter and Twitch in the description box down below. They very kindly recorded the gameplay that you're seeing in this video because I have not quite yet encountered these monsters, but I wanted to put together this guide anyway so you guys know what you need to do so you can start working towards it because honestly, these are really cool. You definitely want to do this. So yeah, massive shout out. Super appreciate the gameplay. Definitely be sure to check out Femu over on Twitter, Twitch, check out the live streams, all that good stuff. So I want to talk about five monsters that can be unlocked once you complete the campaign and this all relates to the Guiding Lands. Those monsters are Scarred Yangaruga, Brute Tigrex, Silver Rathalos and Gold Rathian. There is also Ruin and Ogigante which I'll speak about at the end. Now the first four, these are tied to the Guiding Lands. If you guys have seen my video the other day then you will know what the Guiding Lands is. It is the new endgame area. It's kind of, to a degree, comparable to the Everwood from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. A little bit different, but basically, you go into this area and you just hunt loads of monsters and you level up the different areas. Now, you'll know that if you look at the map, areas have levels. If you hunt monsters within these areas, you gather and mine materials, you break parts, that kind of stuff. Gradually, you will level up the area that you're in. Now, bear in mind, these levels can go up and go down, but initially, you start off and level 4 is the cap. Now, once you progress your Hunter rank and you get to the point where you are Hunter rank 69, you will be given a quest which will allow you to break through that hunter rank lock. That quest is called Big Burly Bash. It'll have you hunt two tempered monsters, a tempered Brachidios and a tempered Glavinus. And once you've done that, it'll then break your HR and it'll allow you to then level the Guiding Lands higher. Now, at this point, this is where you can start working towards unlocking these four monsters because what you then want to do is get each of the areas to level 6. Now, obviously, you might want to focus on one of these at one time. Keep in mind, if you fight a monster that starts in one area and they move to another area, that's fine. That just means they kind of originated from an area. So let's just say you want to level up the forest. Then you will typically look for monsters that are roaming around the forest. They spawn in the forest, or you can go to the handler and call a monster out in the forest. And then you fight them, defeat them, and this will level up that particular area. So keep this in mind because if you want to level something specific, which as you'll find out in a second, you want to do, then this is what you need to do. You need to go around, hunt monsters, and because you've now broken through your HR, because you've now completed that quest, you can then go up as far as level 6. And this is the important thing because level 6 is how you unlock these new monsters. Each of those four monsters I listed, Skardian Garuga, Brute Tigrex, Silver Rathalos, and Gold Rathian, are linked to the four zones in the Guiding Lands. The forest, the Wild Spire, the Coral Highlands, and the Rotten Vale. So what you want to do is, if you want to unlock Skardian Garuga, you need to go and level the forest up to level 6. Now this one is a little bit different because Skardian Garuga doesn't actually have its own armor set. It is a different fight, it does have its own moves, but it is not, technically speaking, a different monster in the sense that you don't get different armor or weapons from it. It'll still yield Yangaruga parts, but it's another fight. If, however, you want to unlock Brute Tigrex, you need to level up the Rotten Vale. If you want to unlock Gold Rathian, you need to level up the Wild Spire Waste. And if you want to unlock Silver Rathalos, you need to level up the Coral Highlands. So, each of those areas will need to be level 6. Now, keep in mind, once you level up and once you hit level 6, they won't just instantly spawn. It isn't one of those things where you just hit level 6 and bam, the quest is there. It will still function in traditional Guiding Lands fashion in that once you've got that area to level 6, you then want to go around, continue fighting monsters in that area, gathering tracks, ideally picking up investigations, and eventually, once it is within that level 6 bracket, it has the chance to spawn, has the chance to show up, and that is when you can then encounter those monsters. So, you might get lucky, it might happen early on, or you might have to hunt quite a few monsters before it starts to show up. But either way, if you want to unlock them, those are the conditions. Break your hunter rank, so you can then actually level the guiding lands beyond level 4. 
get your selected area, or get all of them if you want to do that, but get your selected area to level 6. And then spend some time in there, gather some tracks, and then eventually you will see that monster. Now keep in mind once you've encountered that monster, naturally you can then get investigations from them, and you can get quests, which is precisely why the gameplay you're seeing in this video is in the arena, because obviously having now encountered them, the quests are unlocked, and it just makes it easier to showcase the monster very quickly. So that is fundamentally what you need to know. Now as for Ruin and Ogigante, for those of you guys that have completed the story, you will know that once you get to that point in the story, you get to fight it, but then it flies off, and then you just don't get to hunt it at all, there's no quest for it. That is because this is one of the last quests you will unlock. Once you get to Master Rank 99, you'll get a quest to hunt Ruina and Nogigante, and of course, that is where you can then start farming it for the armor, weapons, and gear. So, for the time being, that is your quick guide on how to unlock the five remaining secret monsters at Endgame. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. As always, if you have any questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below, and be sure to keep it locked for plenty more Iceborne content. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.